Silverado RST. This is the refresh. If you're not aware of that, it is just the second uh, body style of this generation truck. So they updated the front end as well as the interior. So it has the big giant interior, but we'll start with the exterior. So 5,000 miles, we have really no issues aside from the paint. So let's just go straight into the paint. Uh, beautiful color, glacier blue metallic here. But this has been repaired from the factory. It was, uh, I've got a different video on that, but you can see that there. The consistencies of the paint throughout the vehicle do not reflect the quality that it should be. Multi-function tailgate, absolutely best tailgate ever made. Well, let's go to this side where we have the flaking paint. It's gonna be repaired, but if you notice from the other side, the consistencies I was talking about, it's throughout the whole cab, the whole truck. Uh, the bedsides are gonna be repainted here coming up pretty soon, but we won't get into that either. Uh, so paint quality, we're gonna get a one out of 10. How about that one? Multi-flex tailgate, absolutely love this thing. So the reason why I love this so much is because when I load dirt bikes in there, I can just walk right up this. See what I mean? That's what I'm talking about. So if you're on the fence about it, it's a cheap option. So just add it. You can add speakers into it. You could do whatever you want. Lights, but beautiful color. The black 20 inch wheels, definitely something that I wanted and definitely something that I don't regret, but the color is just amazing. It's an RST Duramax 3.0. Let's pop the hood. We'll talk about under the hood and then we'll do the full interior. And there we are. I've done a couple things here and you'll see that in my other videos if you want to, but I'll briefly go over them right now. PPE intake resonator delete. We have the intercooler pipes. This is the intercooler right here. These are the pipes. These are the same diameter. They're just stronger and they flow nicely because they're smoother inside. The duct right there. S and B duct in the back that goes into the turbo inlet, but with a factory air box. It's the, just the preferred way for me to go. I did some testing and that's what I preferred. A little rock chip right there. Don't tell anybody. I'm a big fan of the lights up front. Kind of look like lava. So moving into the inside here. Cool startup screen. That will go once I close the door. So, updated key fob, this fits real nicely. So still push button start, extended crank so that way it doesn't have the no start issue. If you're aware of the no start issue, that's the resolution. All right, so what we've got, so this is the screen right here and I, it's super nice. Everybody loves it when you see it. It should have been in these trucks sooner. I'm using the Apple CarPlay only because the Google that comes with it. So the Google Assistant, you have 30 days of a trial. And after that, they just boot you out. Some apps and features don't work. Uh, basically nothing works with it. So that's after 30 days. It's a considerable delay on this thing. To do that, you need a data plan from your vehicle manufacturer. That's totally fine because, you know, why would you want all the features that you paid for when you got the truck, right? So you either pay $15 a month or there's other packages, $25 a month. You pay that and you can get the features back on your your radio. But instead, I'm just using Apple, Car Pro, Apple CarPlay. And with that, you're able to use the same size screen as you had in the previous generation trucks but then you can squeeze your music on the side over there 
or a connector trailer, or you can have a clock that nobody knows how to read. I'm kidding. So useless, but that's okay. That's just one of the fun features of future technology. So they move the trailer brake over here. I like where that's at. The whole button assembly over here for the HVAC, super nice. Auto stop start, that's still completely useless because it takes forever for it to engage whenever you're at a stoplight and you look like an idiot when you're not going. Park assist does not work because the truck is not equipped with it from the factory. That was a microchip thing. Lane departure, that we'll have to do an example on that in a little bit. Uh, let's see here, the tailgate, that's pretty cool. It's self-explanatory. Hazards, traction control, hill descent control. Never use that. Don't plan on using that, but it's part of the Z71. And what that is, is when you're descending down a, a hill and you want to maintain a very slow speed without it accelerating or without jamming on the brakes, because it's a safety thing. If you jam on the brakes when you're going down a slick hill, you're going to slide out. So this will come in handy if you need that. This auto down, love it. So when it's hot outside, you hit that button, evacuate all the air out of here, crank up the AC and you're good to go. It does not auto up and that is unfortunate. So then you have to manually hold buttons and that just takes a bunch of our time. So let's go into the dash. All right, going through the gauge cluster here, we're at 56.46 on the miles and here's the best 450 mile average. And here is the best 50 mile average and best 25 mile average. We're gonna go back to the 50, leave that there. So tire pressure is pretty basic. So 5,646.2 miles, we're averaging 24.6 miles per gallon throughout that whole life. I'd say that's pretty darn good. Uh, this was my drive that I just did right now, or right here is the one that I did right now. So we have def fluid. I've used three gallons so far within the 5,600 miles. And that's what's remaining. So that's probably half a gallon, just over half a gallon that I need to put in. So we'll call it three and a half gallons. Uh, you can even stretch it to four gallons if you wanted to over the course of 5,600 miles, which isn't bad at all. I have not towed at all. So this was um, after driving. I do have an aftermarket trans cooler on this and that's why the temperatures are mighty low just had my first oil change so if we go into the layout you can go with classic progressive and then there's digital and then clean is just that where it's just plain i like the classic that's what i've currently been using the progressive is what i was using before so left side, here are the options you can have on the left side. And I like to see the trans fluid temperature. The right side info. I prefer the truck on the drive mode enhance and I'll show you why in just a second here. But here are the other options. So then we'll go to lower gauges. I prefer it here because it gives you the basics of what you need. Maximum shows you uh, oil pressure, which is always deathly low looking, and then your voltage. Minimum is just the fuel. That's nice also, but I prefer it on medium because then I can see the coolant temperature, which does not move very much at all on this model, thankfully. Care about that. Speed sign display, super cool. Oh, you know what? I need to turn off my hill descent. So this is awesome because it'll tell you the speed limit of the area that you're at. However, when your 30 days of Google expires, you get these two cool dashes lines and that's all you look at. So I go ahead and turn that off because I didn't subscribe. So that's where we're at on that. You can see how quiet or you can hear how quiet this thing is. Right. I mean, it is so smooth. These Duramaxes, the three liter Duramax is so awesomely quiet. Oh. All right, let's shut this down and I'll give you... So here's how the truck is built. In case you were wondering what options it has. Um, and I actually skipped my one of my favorite features. I'm going to do that right now. So bear with me while we boot up. All right, what I like, I set this to the camera. 
so that way I can have that. Oh, my door is open, so that's why we have this. So I absolutely love the cameras around this thing. I mean, you can see everything. Look, if you do a burnout backwards, that's the line you're gonna go. If you do a burnout forwards, that's the line you're gonna go. So this will show you, I mean, whatever, if you're rock crawling, whatever you're doing, while you're driving, you can click this stuff. So it's, it's all pretty neat, you know? The other way to do this, if you wanna get to just the front, so what I like to do is I'll throw it in reverse and that pops on the camera. Then when you throw it in drive, it throws it into the front camera. So if you want to do real quick, I'll show that again. Reverse pulls up the camera, pop it in reverse, throw it in drive, and it goes on there. So that's real quick to get to your camera. But I also found, we should probably put it in the P gear. I also found that I, if I move this up there, the camera button, it'll take me right there. So let's go outside again, unless you want to talk about this shifter. So it is as awkward as you think it is. Why it needs to be this bulky, I don't know. You have to hold the button down to do it. It's everything you think it is, uh, but there's no getting away from it. So we're stuck with it, so enjoy it. Auto park brake. So you got your modes right here. So this will click us over into sport mode. People claim better fuel mileage in sport mode. I haven't seen any difference in fuel mileage in anything that I use. And then, uh, what else? I thought there was something else. Off-road. So the owner's manual, owner's manual will tell you everything you need to know about those. Unfortunately, I don't have that info on me. And then there's this fancy little tow haul button right there, which tells you exhaust brake is on. And let me tell you, when you're going down a hill and you just tap the brake a little bit, you know, it, you could feel it. You could feel that working. Um, I have not towed with it, unfortunately. I know that's embarrassing, but with this truck, I have not. Previous trucks, I have. And surprisingly, the exhaust brake does seem to work pretty good. I'm gonna grab the keys so I don't accidentally lock myself out. We're gonna go under the hood one more time. So part of the additions on this truck are a host of PPE parts. So. I have the trans cooler. I really hope you can see this, but I have installed a, a very large transmission cooler. And I used to see temps of 192, 195, 200 by the time I got home. And uh, once I installed that cooler, 170s, 160s. Now, in addition to that, I have a deep trans pan right there. And that'll add four quarts super nice little add-on so interior holding up how's that interior well you can't even tell it's been used to be honest with you 5,000 miles you're really not going to see too much wear hopefully and in this case we don't i do not have seat heaters because that was part of the microchip issue and they're not out yet but here's the rear so i did this a little different than other people it comes with a box back here i ended up not using that and I much prefer this because when I have the dog, I can lay the bed down here. She has more room. It's much nicer for everyone. 